Let's head from Nelson to Queenstown, where social service providers say a local newspaper naming and shaming drink drivers on its front page could do more harm than good. The front page of yesterday's mountain scene lists 100 people who've been convicted of drink driving so far this year, 76 of them appearing before the court for at least the third time. Maya Burry has been looking at this for us. The paper's editor, David Williams, says the drink driving culture is at epidemic levels and ingrained in the town, with convictions in the area running ahead of national averages. David Williams says the convicted are a mix of tourists and locals. He says it has started a campaign to get people to think twice about getting behind the wheel after too many drinks. People know that drink driving happens in this town and obviously it's not enough of an issue that people have taken any hard or fast moves to try and stop it and that's why we thought we could do something. We want people to talk about it, we want them to think about what they're doing and most importantly think about it if they've been out drinking, whether they want to take the risk of being on the front page later in the week. Mr Williams says the police are pleased with the campaign, which has attracted international media attention from The Guardian and the BBC. But not everyone in Queenstown is backing the paper's approach. Catherine Denniston is an addiction or substance abuse counsellor in the town. I get that there's a lot of anger from the community around this issue, and there should be, but I don't think that the name and shame technique is an effective strategy in terms of putting people off. I think that it can be detrimental for people who do make a mistake, who get themselves in trouble, who pick themselves up and um, get their lives back together and then, you know, anybody that Googles their name, that's the first thing that comes up. That's a message echoed by another local councillor, Mark, who only wanted to use his first name. He says the campaign could do more damage than good. The fact that you're isolating people and, and, and pushing them out by, by um, naming and shaming them just makes them more stressed, makes life harder for them, puts them at odds with, with other friends because they know what they've done. In a time when they need people to get close to them and believe in them and, and, and give them support. Jane Guy, the regional coordinator for Jigsaw, a family violence agency in Queenstown, says she's also disappointed by the campaign. We all want this to stop. We all don't want people to die because of this. But shame research has shown that it doesn't stop people from doing it. It usually either drives people underground to do it secretly, um, or, it, as I said, it stops people accessing and standing up and saying, I need support around this issue. Ms Guy says the paper is creating divisions in the community, which should be coming together to fight the problem. I think what would be helpful was things like allowing access to people getting home safely and breathalyzing people in bars, um, bars taking up more of the support role around what they can do to stop people doing this. But David Williams says the names of people convicted at the Queenstown District Court for drink driving were already being published in the newspaper before the campaign started. He says while those named may feel ashamed, it wants to stop others making the same mistakes. I'm not a researcher, but given the conversations I had yesterday, I'm hopeful it will work, that people will think twice. And obviously we're not just going to sit down. That's not the end of the campaign. So we've got other things up our sleeve. And it's a balanced campaign. Of course, people need support and they need care if they've got a problem. And we'll be re reporting about those aspects of the campaign too. David Williams says it has not had any feedback from social service providers since yesterday's paper was published. He says anyone who is convicted of drink driving in the area this year can expect to find themselves on the front page. For Checkpoint, Maya Burry.